With these case study tips, I was able to get my first UX project into a FANG company. So why is how you present your case study so important? And it's because this is the first impression a recruiter will have of your work is say if you are applying for a job or an internship. And if your work does not fit what they're looking for in a UX designer, it's going to be really hard to move on to the next round. Now I'm going to assume that you already finished or are near done with your UX design case study. And before even like going about, you know, transferring it to a website and like publishing it online, the first thing that I've done was I went through as many examples of other UX design case studies that I found. And a major way that I did that was going through this website called cofolios.com. I rave about cofolios all the time and mention it all the time in my other videos, but I will show you again really quickly. So here is cofolios. It's essentially, you know, my goal as a UX designer, I wanted to get into Fang. That's just like my focus. So I thought what other better way to know how to structure a case study than from other people who also got into Fang. Now, um, I would essentially like I'd spend an hour every day of like going through all these different case studies and um, essentially structuring out like actually writing down on paper, like step by step, how did they structure it and having that on a sheet of paper so I know like physically where is where. I'm totally butchering the name, but I love Tushar Gupta's case study on especially his service center. So if you look here, going back, it's this one here. And it's like whichever ones that you feel most attracted to, I would just like literally write it down in my notebook. Like, okay, I see that he did a really beautiful cover image first, big title, you know, context, um, seeing a lot of like visual aid, infographic kind of images instead of like everything being so, so text heavy. And yeah, I would just like constantly read through these and try to map out like which goes first and which goes second and which goes last. Same thing with Nicholas Pellegrino, he's down here with his Ponder app. You have this beautiful like cover with really nice UI followed by some context, followed by maybe the problem or the solution depending on which way you want to go. Then going into the research, then the analysis and the, you know, the design and iteration. So it's generally following the same structure and that's what my goal was to not copy it exactly, but to follow that same foundational structure, which then I can apply to my own project. And going through these other case studies, overall, the thing that I found was it starts off with this gorgeous cover image, followed by some context of the intro, who your teammates were, a solution first, a breakdown of the solution, followed by the research, analysis, how might we use, ID dating and the solutions, iterations, final design, and finally, links to the style guide, slide deck, and possibly even your Figma file. And if you want to go the extra step, always adding an extra space for the reflections page is always a plus. And now the point is not to copy exactly what other people are doing, but the point was like to try to find the general structure that other UX designers have had and that were successful and reuse that structure for your own project. Now, after continually getting more examples, what I did was even before transferring onto a website, brain dump everything into a Google Doc. So going back to my screen here am I this is like my springboard folder and I'll make folders for everything um, I believe I was over here in folder 11 and under uh, this one case study outline and I remember doing like three iterations of it this is the first one I've done and really like do not think about the aesthetics or anything just anything you want to say or you think you want to say write it all down and write down everything from the problem to solution probably use the UX design process to help you start to guide um, how to structure your project I remember from seeing from other design backgrounds have having some background on how you started it followed by the problem solution and just essentially listing out anything that you think you want to say and that's what I did as well especially on the design process I remember Remember, you know getting feedback from my Google UX mentor you would say for design you know don't focus so much on the process try to focus more on like what would move the needle the most in terms of your project you don't need to list out absolutely everything that you've done instead just think you know what is the problem then followed by the insights how did you get to those insights and then the solution that's essentially what's more important so you don't need to add like all these extra little things that you've done and for this, I remember, you know, doing like three iterations of this case study outline before even transferring it to my website. And finally, if I scroll up to the top, this is like my final version three. Um, it's still not finished before I transferred it to my website. And now before going into the major tips to help your UX case study, I want to say a major thank you to my bootcamp springboard. Back about two years ago, when I was transitioning from the fashion design industry to the UX design industry, I had 
very little clue of where to start. And especially knowing that I want to work a thing one day, I knew that I needed very specialized help and Springboard was able to do that for me. So if it sounds like you and you're interested in a UX bootcamp, feel free to use my code Sharon Kim to get $1,000 off your UX design tuition. And I'll also leave the link in the description box down below. All right, so going back to my website, here is my UX case study that I presented, and these are the major tips that you guys wanna know. So overall first is following the same structure that I've seen for other UX designers, you wanna entice them with a really beautiful UI. And at first, when doing this case study cover, I first wanted to do like sort of those side angle iPhone views. I'll put a picture up here uh, above, this is what it looks like. But my mentor specifically told me not to do that. And the reason why that is, is because although it looks aesthetically pleasing, when a recruiter looks at your project, they don't want to see the angles. They'd rather see clear screens that better give them an idea of how your app works. And having things at an angle is going to make it a lot harder for them to do that. And what I've also noticed is, you know, with these other uh, case studies I see for Ponder and again for Service Center, they're actually pretty compact, you know, they're not super elaborate to really elaborate your case study. That's what the slide deck, you know, Google Slides, whatever is for when you are doing an actual one on one interview with an interviewer. So when doing mine overall, I did this thing called like a one scroll test, which essentially, you know, I would like maybe start at the top and I would do one scroll on the mouse pad like this. Um, so if I try here, if I do one scroll, and if it essentially is not at the end or like, you know, 80% towards the end of your case study, that means it is too long and you have to cut it down. At most, it should be, it should go a little bit beyond the end of that one scroll, that being right here, which is, you know, my conclusion. Also, something to keep in mind when doing this case study is it's not about, you know, like how many words can you fit on the page, but the overall feeling of this website case study is that your goal is to want to make the recruiter feel when they're reading this, to think to themselves, do I feel like this person knows what they're talking about? And if the answer is yes, then that's a good sign. So that's the only thing that you should be focusing on. And a major way you could do that is, again, through really beautiful UI. Because if you have good UI, the recruiter is going to think that you naturally have good UX too. There's, I remember there's even a law for it about how better aesthetics make it seem like the app or whatever design feels um, more functional. Now scrolling down, you always want to give some context, you know, like should be more than like a quarter of the page. Uh, from when to when did you do this project? How many weeks? What was your role? Um, did you do it in a boot camp? Did you do it with a partner for a school project? Give them more context so they know what to expect. And when you're laying out this case study, actually try to make it, you know, about, um, about, actually try to make it like pretty wide with like ample amount of white space on the side. I would not give it more white space in than this right here. I remember reviewing my friend's case study where his case study started around here and that's a little bit too tight. You want to like give it a, a, a bit more space. And if you see here, I start off with the main problem followed by the solution. Um, some people, they like to put the solution all the way at the bottom, but personally, I would recommend to put the solution at the top but I would recommend to put the solution at the top because it's like, here is the final solution and now you're going to be like working backwards about how you got there. So they already like know what the end result is, which, which is probably going to be really good. And another thing is, this is like a major tip. So for these main headers, right? Instead of saying problem as like the main header, make the actual header or the headline for that section be the main thing that you learned from that section. For example, this is like a pretty bold text called students fail to accomplish their personal goals. I would not make this header just say problem. And it's because thinking in the recruiter's perspective again, right? They're probably not going to spend more than two minutes on your website. And I almost want you to think about it like, say the recruiter could only read the headlines of each section. They could only read this. They could only read this. If they only read the headlines, would they still understand the majority or the gist of what your case study was about? And that should be your goal. I, it's kind of like the thing when you're say, I think like Oprah did this, like you read a book and she'd say she can read a book in two minutes, but then what she means by that is she would just open up the first page and only read the chapters. So that kind of thing about it like that, these are the chapter titles and they should be able to understand the majority of it through those titles. Another thing is the difference between this H1, right? Uh, the main title versus like the H3, the problem. There should be a very clear contrast between the title versus the subtitle and the text. 
I made sure to make this, you know, double the weight and also bold. We're, we're really aiming for skimmability here and the more contrast you're able to have with those text sizes and the boldness of it, it'll be a lot more visually striking and easier for the recruiter to go through your website. Moving on for each section, you know, you have the main title and you have a small blurb. It should not be more than three to four sentences per section, right? You just want to give a little bit of taste of what that section was about and you can further flesh that out in the case study when you're actually in the interview. Here you have the problem, then move on to the solution so they know what to expect. How did this project, you know, what was the final outcome and work backwards from that? And same thing, I've known that um, Tushar has done this where his solution was also like the screens and it has like a bullet point sort of like summary of each key screen of how it um, addresses the problem, right? And that's what I've done as well. And trying to like always make infographics or visuals for what you're doing is always um, a better way to communicate and visually appeal your message to your audience. And for say, even these, right? I actually did not do this in Squarespace. That's where I did my website, but I did it in Figma. So I'll show you my Figma file really quickly. Here is my website. I'll also link this full Figma file in my description box down below so you can see it yourself. But you see here, like I just made frames, right? This is like iPad Pro and these are like the width and pixel heights. And I would just like create multiples of that with the prototype and the uh, shapes behind it and have like a summary of that and insert that instead, instead of just like having a bunch of text boxes and having like an image block underneath that. This seems more visually appealing in Figma. And when presenting your solution, instead of just having this general generic thing of like accountability partners are going to help you achieve your goals, but actually break it down of like, are there three main solutions towards this problem? Actually list it out. I think using numbers and using bullet points wherever you can is always a plus. If you can write it down in a list, instead of a list, always make sure it's in bullet points. So you see here, I, under accountability partners, I don't have this longer paragraph explaining this first solution, but I always break it down into bullet points as it's easier to skim. And I have a very clear one, two, three, this is all the solution points and it's very clear to the recruiter to know like this is exactly how many solutions and a quick skim of what each solution does. Now moving on, I will remember moving on to research, right? Same thing, I'm, I'm not just saying research for the title, but I'm saying what the actual, what's the main thing that you found from that research? And that's what I put here. And that's a lot more enticing than just saying research. Same thing, if you can link things to your research, have some quick links there. This is where I did mine from the American Society of Training and Development. And if you have any pull quotes, make sure to differentiate that since that seems more significant to, um, to, to call out. And overall for research, you can separate it into white paper secondary research versus primary research, that being your interviews. So here I've done my white paper research, had sectioned it off like that and always having, you know, like dividers between sections to make a clear differentiation between sections as well. And then going on to, you know, a competitive analysis and the gap, what's the main thing that you found from competitive analysis? That being, I found it had no accountability aspect. I don't have the blurb be more than three sentences at most. Again, I need another vision in Figma, which I will show you here. Just grabbing a bunch of icons and changing, you know, like the the corner radius of it. And again, making it into a more visually enticing thing uh, for to put into your website, followed by the user interviews. Keep it really short and sweet. Again, like this entire case study should not be more than like one scroll if you were to do that. I see here only done like two things list out the specific research questions you had. What was the main questions that really um, helped you drive the, the main insights forward, right? And I would list it out into either numbers or bullet points. I think numbers in this case would be more appropriate and followed it up with more visuals of how about how I kind of like put everything together. So it's always, you know, like you give the main title, this is a gist, you don't have to read the extra blurb, but then following it up with a few more bullet points to give a quick skim through of what you did do, followed by a visual to make it more enticing. And this is what my mentor has told me for the main insight. From your analysis, don't move immediately onto how might we, but then from your affinity mapping, what was that main thing that you learned from all that research? What is that main thing that's going to drive your project forward? And for this, I found was, you know, none of the previous apps my interviewees used worked due to a lack of accountability. And then further on, I made another infographic of, you know, you, you see here, I've done like a lot of affinity mapping, but then I would constantly cluster those 
um, post-it notes from insights from those interviews from my friends and from my target users into groups then into like themes and I would section those themes into larger themes as well and you could see here um, these are all separate insights that I found from my interviews but then I would group them according to major themes one being of community motivation and performance so you're not just thinking of your insights in isolation, but also connecting them together into larger groups and trying to find this sort of framework of how these even three themes of community, motivation, and performance all uh, come together towards this entire framework of like productivity and accountability and trying to achieve your goals, right? And considering all of that, I made a quick college student persona. Um, looking at it now, I actually don't find personas helpful, but maybe use cases instead. But I think, you know, since this was like my first project, it seems it's not like you can't not have a persona, so I, I put it in here. And um, whatever research or insights you've gotten that into, make it very clear. Maybe there's that one persona, maybe you have two personas, maybe one key persona and two like secondary personas that you want to have, whatever like you found from your own research. Another divider to make sure it's a very clear section that you're moving on to the next uh, part of this case study is now setbacks in a new direction of accountability. So like this, I feel like this part was very specific towards my project of trying to, you know, approach where my downfall was when trying to design this, but even showing my mistake, right, of I, you know, I spent two weeks trying to play with three different directions and it didn't work out, but I still put that in there. However, although it was setback, I didn't spend too long on it. It's just enough to let the recruiter know, or if I'm presenting this project, that I was trying to explore as many possibilities as possible and not just limited to a mobile medium. I even tried doing like AR, VR stuff, which totally did not work out, um, which you can see in my presentation up here above. But nonetheless, showing and being transparent but concise is the goal. When you design right and you design everything, I think what really makes a project stand out is to know that you tried a lot of different things. You didn't just come up with the one solution and settled on that one solution. But maybe it's like, you know, you didn't just do a app design, but what if you imagined it to be like a VR design? You know, like maybe that was the better way to approach this entire space of productivity. But overall, trying to find a lot of different nuances in design, even if they're not major, you know, design changes, right? It comes to show that you're being very thoughtful and intentional about it. But considering all of that, what are the three major improvements in your design? And you, when you further flush that out into a more built out slide deck, then you can further elaborate on like what, how you got to those three major improvements. But here again, I used visuals using the same thing I did on Figma which you see here, I use like an iPad sort of frame to start on it. Again, really clearly listing it out. Don't just say major improvements in your design, how many improvements, what are the most major ones and why were they the most major? You don't have to show me ev absolutely everything that you've done, only the main things that really pushed your project forward. To make it really clear, I did a before and after. This was before, this is the after. Again, main titles, using things, um, listing things in bullet point format and almost having a dynamic of like, this is one, this is two, this is three, instead of having all of the screens be this one slide, but I think kind of having it like this makes it seem more visually engaging, hence why I kind of switched up the order of these screens for the improvements. Finally, moving on to the final product, right? I think it's going to be very beneficial to have like prototypes, mockups, maybe even screenshots, that's okay too, as long as it works, right? Of what are the major key screens in your app that help your design? And for mine, I see, you know, what's that main screen or like when you're starting this thing, what what are those main points that are, are going to, that are integral to the success of your app? That being for mine, uh, choosing who your accountability partner is, having a reminder for when you have to accomplish this goal that you set out for yourself, and then this aspect of sending evidence towards that partner. And you see that here, you send it to your partner and the last screen you get to upkeep with those goals as well. So having all those, I would say recommend probably four to five screens four to five key screens to show in your final solution would be very beneficial. And at the end, if you have a um, actual working prototype embedded so the recruiter can quickly, you know, they can just touch it and just to make sure that things are working and they know that overall it does have a good feeling towards it of what you could do is a major plus.
overall it's like, it's like you don't want to give the recruiter red flags of things not working or um, things not looking as good as they could be which is what i've done here having the key screens quick overview and if they want to interact with it they know that it's just working and it gives them more of a sense of security that you are someone they want to move on to the next interview round Finally, finishing off with a style guide. Again, and more visuals I made in Figma. I make it very clear with labels of what the colors are, the logo, typography, grid spacing. You can elaborate why you chose these colors in your uh, slide deck uh, with your interviewer. And lastly, or, or two things, First is I always encourage everyone to link their full Figma file in their actual case study website. I think like showing others just the amount of sheer work that you've done um, throughout your project really shows a lot of transparency in your design thinking process. You know, it's almost like showing I as a designer don't have anything to hide. I've done the work. I know I've done the work. And here is just everything that I've done. So you can fully see my design working progress. And a tip for when you are, you know, maybe like you haven't really organized it before making your case study thing that we're doing right now, which is okay. But what I recommend is it's also if you are going to link your full Figma working file into it, I would suggest to highly, you know, make pages for everything. Show that you're very organized because it's not just you're a good designer, but when you're working with other people, when you are doing like cross team collaborations, can you organize your designs and information in a way that's easily digestible and accessible for other team members to access? So that's why I clearly labeled everything from inspiration, wireframing, um, which version of the prototype that you're on. I made multiple and then even using some fun emojis for what the eventual final prototype is, right? And that's what I've done um, just to show that I am a more conscious, holistic designer who knows how to organize as well. And finally, I would say you have to list out a more of like a reflections paragraph. If you can go back, what would you do differently next time? And again, listing it out one, two, three, what are the major things that you have learned or what would you do again if you can move forward or if you could go back and having that more reflective period is super beneficial. I know my friend who also interned for Amazon, but unfortunately she got rejected and when I talked to her the reason she got rejected was because when, when she was asking for feedback from the recruit from the interviewer the interview from her company said yes your designs look very good but we would have still liked to see more still a section on reflections or what you would have done differently but because my friend did not do that they had to reject her so please 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 have do have a conclusion or like a reflective slide section to know that you're still thinking about your project in hindsight and how you see your project going forward or what we what you would do differently going back last thing if you already have it built out have your case study slide deck here i'm all for transparency i always just leave it open for anyone to see if they want to go through that and yeah like overall that is my case study um you know when so this is like how to structure your case study website but if you are actually doing the interview with a interviewer right you could literally just screen share your website your portfolio website that i'm doing with you guys right now but you can either do that or do you know more like traditional case study slide deck on Google Slides or whatnot. Either way, totally acceptable. My friend, he works at Facebook. He just screen shared his Figma file and his portfolio website and it was totally okay. But more traditionally, you, it's always good to have different options, say if, they, say if your company did have a preference. So if you have enough time, although screen sharing both the website or um, slide deck is acceptable, having a slide deck is considered more traditional and it's good, just good to have more options in general. Last, absolute last thing for more work entries, do always put your email and say thank you for reading. And at the bottom, instead of the recruiter having to go scroll all the way back to the top to the home page to go back to see more projects, link more projects on the bottom so they can quickly scroll through that. And the last thing is, I'm pretty sure whatever website you do this on, I use Squarespace, there is a small like, code snippet that I put down and you can see it here, scroll to the top or go back to the top. So the recruiter doesn't actually have to spend that extra three seconds of going back to the top to go um, press the home button. So I would recommend having that little code snippet too for them to easily go back to the top. And if I can see here, if I can find it, I would love to see if I can find that code snippet so I can share it with you guys here. 
All right, so here is code. Let me see what I put here. All right, so here is a code that I put here. And overall, yeah, like you can put this code, you can copy paste it if your, plat if your website platform allows. And I'll put this link to this actual code thing in the description box of the video. Um, don't touch any of this but you can manipulate what it says between these two, you know, uh, carrots. So instead of scroll back to the top, I actually might just say like, go back to the top, go to the top, yeah. And then I could save that. Same thing, go back to the top, and there you are. So that does conclude my tips on how to structure your UX case study website. These tips have helped me when I was trying to prepare my case study to eventually get into a fang company, but of course you can use these tips in general for your case study to apply to any company that you want. If you have any clarifying questions, any tutorials that you'd like to see more in depth, do let me know down in the comments below. You know, a lot of my content is based on the suggestions that will best serve you guys. So I'm more than happy to have that conversation with you and answer any questions you may have in the comments. So again, to help you structure your own case study, down in the description box, I will leave my own case study outline that I made in Google Docs before transferring onto my website. And finally, feel free to use my code Sharon Kim to get $1,000 off your UX design tuition at Springboard if you want to go into a bootcamp as well. So I'm really looking forward to answering your comments and clarifying questions down below. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you next time.